these are the three Honda crankshaft tools. You can buy this tool and this one for about ninety dollars and they'll fit one side but this will work on both sides. This slides down on the threaded end and the nut right here you hold on to this one nut and as you turn this nut it will push the shaft down to the motor and slowly pull the, um, the crankshaft through it into place. This does the other side. You just put the net on this one, use this in the shaft, it does the other one. Now, the reason um, this is a dual stage tool, this part right here will actually work with this here if you want to put in your rear transmission gear, pull it through the bearing that comes right through the engine case and connects to your clutch. So that's that's uh, what that does too on that. The whole uh, shebang is about 150 bucks and usually what you can do is you can go down to any Honda shop and they can order them for you or what they will usually do is they'll say yeah look uh, we've been in business for 20 years and we got a set in the back that's brand new full of dust because we don't work on moped engines. They throw them away. So they may even sell them to you, which is a good deal. Now this is this is the way that the, the tool is used. And I'm making all these videos as visual aids to show how they work. What we do is we use the larger um, end and that is threaded down or it's just threaded down through the spacer and attached to the crank. Remember you already have your bearing already pressed in there. Okay. Now what, what happens is this um, edge of the crankshaft weight is probably oh uh, it's probably about up out here because it's that much space as you you put a wrench on here and as you twist on this it slowly uh, pulls the um, the threaded part out this way which will pull the crankshaft into the galley to where you have it but with about that much room right there then what you do is we get the other side of the case and we take this part off after it bottoms out. It'll bottom out and you, you will, you'll feel no more tension. And you can see what it looks like right here. And after we get that in place, then we go to the other side up here. We put the, we press the bearing in and we do the same thing to the other side and you do it very slowly and very carefully. Here's the other side right here. This is the um, alternator side and we use a bigger nut right here, bigger uh, sleeve and this the end of this as you can see it go it fits really nicely into the where the bear, um, 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 the seal goes and there is no seal or anything in there the seals go in last. So we have this side pulled in. And th these are real good for reference, you know, if you ever you ever want to know how to do them. Now also I, I can say that if you're hard up, what you can do is you can take a mallet and pound the you can pound the uh, crankshaft through the bearings. I wouldn't recommend it but it can be done because remember you're only dealing with these little tiny bearings but I wouldn't recommend doing that because you could probably screw it up. And these, these are really good tools to have if you're doing this. So now this, this half 
is seated in place and what, what I have here I have the stock crank and I'm just showing you how it looks and you can see up here that the stock crank or any of the cranks if you look at the crank shaft excuse me the um, the rod here fits right here it also leans against the back um, boost port and you'll know it's set in there this is where our little oil plug goes you want to make sure you don't have any dust in there or any aluminum shavings or anything when the when the plug goes in there it has a little rubber seal that seats in there but that rubber seal will not keep it will not keep it from leaking air and you don't want it to leak and then here we have uh, here we have the piston again I mean the uh, crankshaft again one thing I want you to notice like I said all engines tell a story this stock crank up here now I, I got this used on eBay so what happens is they usually run the motors in, into the ground this area got really hot up here which tells me that either the um, wrist pin bearing went out or there was some other kind of problem up there with with heat because they only got these little teeny um, little tiny pistons and you can see I've, I've got some really good pictures on, on this and here is where the here's another high close up you can see where the how close you get it now once you get your crank in close you can if you if you think it's too close there's a little bit of leeway in there what you can do is you look right down the after you get your cases together you look right down the opening here and if both sides aren't equal with their margin between this case and this one to the other case then you can use your puller and, and, and pull one side either out or pull this side out a little bit because you want to have it you want to have it even everything should be even and working okay and you can see the the crank this isn't the stroker crank this is stock but you can see where it's leaning against well it's leaning against the front of the case but you can see it, it's all the way in there and of course I made these pictures for, to show you how the crank goes in there it's all a mock-up now here is your plug that you I bought at VT I bought all this at VT and this is a really nice plug I think so it's got the little rubber there you put a little bit of oil on it and then what you do is you tap it in here very lightly until it goes all the way in and once you get it in there then you want to find a way to secure it now I found my way of securing it which I use uh, JB Weld but I imagine there is other ways that you can do it my way gives me an airtight fit and when I had these in before what happens is that the pressure in the back of the case would build up and tap it forward it go it would breathe forward and you could see little air bubbles come out of it and that's no good because that you're gonna lose case pressure and your engines just gonna, gonna run pretty bad now this um, bolt right here in the end or, or a threaded end you can see the threaded end right here what this is used for is as far as I could tell once you get it seated in there it'll seat in there pretty hard with this rubber o-ring you take a 10 millimeter bolt screw it in there and you use slide hammer and pop it out or you can just pull it out it's, it's no big deal on that and this shows it part way in and there's a, here's a better picture of it part way in remember I took I took a lot of these pictures so that I could I took five or ten pictures so I could get seven good ones and I wouldn't have to do a whole bunch of them all over again the the plug comes with 
the rubber o-ring and it fits in there perfect VT has those there's the plug again this will give you an idea of what how big how big the plug is it's about three inches or I, I have no idea in millimeters but this area either I think it's right here the the crankshaft comes right across that and comes over to where my finger is and on some of the crankshafts you need to make just a little tiny bit of a um, a divot in there so that the crankshaft doesn't tick on it sometimes in the crank crankshafts under a lot of pressure a lot of RPMs it will leave a little scratch mark on there I don't know exactly what it's from but I have noticed that on my engine teardowns so I give it just a little bit of clearance on that now here's the plug remember we're going to go through all phases of this so it's going to take a while but you can always refer back to this and see what you think now this is the um, plug right here this is the plug which will see when this is all the way in it will seat all the way down this small part all the way down there but this part right here is most important this is supposed to lay underneath the bearing um, field so sometimes the crank hits it a little bit just a little bit and I don't know why but it does so what I do is chamfer chamfer it just a bit so it won't hit that camera took some good pictures and you can see the bearing already in there now this bearing right here if you'll notice this is a dummy bearing it has the all the you can see where I've put a Dremel on it and this area will be fixed right there but you want to keep everything nice and clean and while you're when you're sanding or grinding you want to take the engine parts and you want to uh, put you, you pull your dummy bearing out you can get stuff in the dummy bearing it's no big deal but you want to take your parts out and wash them off really good get all the little a little bit of aluminum bullshit out of there so it doesn't get caught in your bearings your new bearings now this is what I meant by getting your your uh, crank straight okay looking down the bore here if you'll notice the gap between this side remember nothing's been done on this side or this side but if you look at the gap here and the gap here you will notice that this gap is probably twice as wide on this side right right here so what you would do after you get your motor together and you've got um, the bolts in it along here you would come back over here where this crankshaft is right there and you would pull your crank over just a you know a, a 30 second of an inch you just want it even between here and here so that everything is even and there's no stress put on any any part that shouldn't be done like that and here we have the the bigger uh, crank set in there. Now none of this has been cut. Okay, what what I what I've done here is this this was a stroker crank for a. No, I know it wasn't. I'm not sure. It's been a while ago. Anyway, that's how it that's what it looks like anyway. And here it is on the back.
the front, you can see where I've started to sand right here. Okay, now we've got to go to the next one. I'm running out of tape. Next series.